Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 11 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, we began building up our city right here in Mbessa, expanding the population and reaching the elder tier of residents. Today, we're going to get to work on creating interdependent islands in Mbessa, further raising our population and begin working with Emperor Katima to unify the land. Now, it's only been a few days since I've played, but it feels like so long and I'm so happy to be back and I've had a chance to go through all of the comments and feedback of the last three episodes. A lot of people pointed out the fact that I can't count. Of course, this was our building site for where we're going to place the monastery. I said it was going to be six by seven. Apparently, I didn't know that I have counted out 6x6, six six, so it's a little bit off, but it's not that big of a deal because I did say during the time lapse that I will be feeding a canal into this town, wrapping it around the monastery to really create a beautiful, ornate, religious building. Kind of like a, a proper temple, in a way. Um, so I think that's going to look awesome, but the reason I don't do it right now is because our elder population needs to grow before I can put down a, pop, um, a hospital and a town halls and kind of really feel out where things need to go. So, that's going to require us getting to 600 elders. Currently, we are at 120. I guess I have them in a in a building of some sort. I'm not sure which one. Can't remember off the top of my head, but it doesn't quite matter. Either way, we have a, uh, 20 at the moment. Oh, this will tell me, wouldn't it, actually? Oh, there we go. They're working in the uh, the uh, brick dry house over here that we put down. Just giving us some construction material. It's kind of almost a temporary placement, although I guess you kind of need someone to do it. Uh, but anyways, so, during this episode, what we're going to be doing is focusing on these quests. We've also got our Docklands about to kick off into Specialty Slot 1. So one of the, a couple of the other things of feedback I need to address before we get started properly is I've got a little quest going on here. We're just going to tell our ships to go after it. Judge, Jury, and Executioner. This is going to give us Tomasina Langton, Promoter Extraordinaire, and a Harbor Master Office item that's going to affect our public moorings. I just thought it was one worth going after, you know, if a legendary item pops, pops up in a quest, I think we should definitely do it. Uh, but basically, we just have to destroy one ship. My ships are actually coming in right now. And we've got our line, Dominator, the item that we transmuted from Old Nate ship under in Cap Trelawney. Set sail. Nice to see a little bit of combat every now and then, even if it is deafeningly loud. And it's happening right outside here. We can actually see... Yeah, there's some people on the fences there. You can imagine they'd just be peering out to see how it's going. Although they don't seem very interested. Just another day for them. <laughs> I guess. And this little guy up here. He's just watching the whole thing unfold. Boom. Alright, nice. As the sun is beginning to set in the distance. Alright, we'll just pick that up. I think we have to bring it back to my harbor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move that ship as well. All right, cool. Um, so, what else? Oh yeah, a lot of people have been mentioning as well that they think maybe a line of trees or something along here would look good. Again, I'm gonna. I know I'm. I'm teasing a lot and I'm keep pushing things back, but this main build is gonna be redone, I guess, in a way. Once I get to ten thousand investors, and I'll do that in a few episodes, I think. I think we need roughly about forty more investor households. Now, bef before we can really get to that, the thing I want to level up is our Docklands, and our Docklands is going to support that extra uh, strain I on our economy for things best. like light this bulbs, isn't the worst. for things like light bulbs, penny farthings, uh, coffee, etc., right? All these, like, luxury goods. We could just put down more production buildings and keep building more, but I'm going to try to make use of the Docklands that we have and do it that way. Of course, we will grow our engineers at some point. Now, speaking of Docklands... Our Docklands at the attack. moment, a lot of people were mentioning that gold, uh, had I removed it from the tier list uh, by accident, so I fixed that, I resolved that problem, but now I've actually just seen it's gone up to level 3, I didn't realize, we, I did have it in level 4, but I guess we just maybe sold something in between episodes, yeah, so these are kind of off again, unfortunately, I think this is supposed to be 440, this is supposed to be 400, I should really write these down, it's a sh such a shame that as this gets better, it increases the amount you import in. I'd rather that stay the same, because I've worked this out for the, you know, the production chains. Anyway, uh, and 140. But either way, we're saving gold all the time. I think it's a really cool good to specialize in, and as we get more and more better, as we get better at it, and we get better stuff, more, you know, more stuff back for it, or more availability, as our gold goes further, we can start to import things like zinc, copper, and even gold ore, so we could just make more of it if we wanted to, which is a bit weird, but we could try it. Um, so I'm really happy with that. I've just noticed, though, that in our next, um, sale, 
we're going to be shipping enough soap that it might actually become specialty slot number one. And if that happens, we will start to get a quest from Captain Tobias here. So that might take our attention away for a little while. All right, anyways, is that everything? I think that might be everything that I had to talk about. Oh, yeah, no, actually, one last thing. People were mentioning that in the Arctic, they're saying, why don't you merge your trade route so that, you know, you have a, I had a dedicated airship bringing gas to and from the Arctic. It did seem like a waste. I did say it was kind of temporary. But I've uh, fixed that now in between episodes. So essentially, on the coal trade route, the coal that gets delivered up here to King William Island, oh, the these ships will now take back gas. So this ship is going to wait until it unloads all of the coal it can. And, uh... The gas is going to be brought here Wait, via an oh. airship and dropped here. This ship's going to drop off coal, and once it empties out fully, it'll pick up the gas and leave. Now, there's a little bit of a inefficiency, I guess, because we have to wait here, wait for all the coal to unload. Let's have a look if it drops it all off, if it can, uh, just as it delivers it now. Yeah, so b barely at all. But, as the airship comes around to collect it, and we do have multiple piers, we have three piers in total, so it's not that bad. But as the airship comes around to collect coal, it's going to obviously, you know, take away 200. And then we also have a trade route here just in the Arctic. This one. That's constantly picking up coal and delivering it to the different islands as well. So, a little bit of an inefficiency or whatever. This ship just has to wait here until it unloads. I didn't want to throw, throw coal overboard. It seems like a massive waste. Um, so this one will wait here, grab the gas, and come back. So our gas production back home is now slightly waiting on how we deliver coal. That's the quote-unquote inefficiency that's going on there, if you know what I mean. Anyways, let's go... I think that's pretty much everything. So let's go back to Enbesa. Should I just make it, um... Maybe 6 a.m. There we go. All right, cool. So we're going to start doing some quests. We've actually got a lot to do. Um, so let's see. So I don't know if I just mentioned it, but yeah, so we're finally getting to work with the next production chains, right? If we want to bring our elders up to the next level, or not to the next level, if we want to maximize the amount of elders per household, they're going to require ceramics and require tapestries. That's going to require indigo, and we don't have that on this island. So we're going to go to this one, Strath Rancor. We're going to have to rename these. I saw some naming suggestions, but nothing I was too interested in. <laughs> no offense. I have gone with airship names, like, like I said, but... um. Yeah, I need to come up with some names of my own for these islands out here. I'll have to do that Not maybe in between episodes. And this one, we'll call this Katima's Whoa, you're the undisputed master, Finger. <laughs> oh, it looks like our Docklands have actually just gotten to level 1. Maybe we'll just focus that instead. I'm sorry that I'm hopping around, but there's always so much going on in Anno 1800. So our Docklands now would have just dealt with go um, soap yet again over at the other place, uh, Swords. Deep blue. Shark. She was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Let's have a listen to Tobias. A ghost. A white memory in the vast blackness of water and time. So he's talking about his love for the na uh, for the shark Deep Blue. And that's actually what he named his ship after. And if you recall, his ship looks like a shark. Uh, there it is, actually, here. What I'd give to see her again. So, I reckon you could help? deliver our proof of destruction. I can share my ship's plans. So, Captain Tobias asks you to, uh, for your help. You use it well. So, oh, stirrings from the deep. Here we go. Underneath Captain Tobias's blustery exterior lies a fascination for things of the deep. A fascination that extends to e even to his ship. A curious, shark-shaped tanker. The lure of the abyss, the song of the sea, all of it hailing back to a memory long ago. And the tale of an encounter in the mists of the past. Alright, we'll get to that in just a sec. Is that his ship there? Oh, it is. Where is Eli? Oh, Eli's ship is in there. So just hang on one sec. We have to drop his stuff off first. I'll just say yes to this. Yes. Foggy night it was. Three decades past. Ship stranded in the dark fog. Me alone on deck. With the fog. Only our reporting in. Sorry. <laughs> so ships had known not to run us in. Ever heard a foghorn at night? Horribly, horribly lonely and yearning sound. Okay. Ready to <laughs> bail just for the Admiral. Alright, so to continue this. So he's basically saying like I think the foghorn is what called the shark towards him. So we'll just, ship of the line, just turn our ship here. Let's put the foghorn in the docklands. Let's turn it to nighttime. 
We don't have to do that, but I like to be immersive. And let's place it in there. Is she going to appear? Is it deep blue? Wait, is that... Oh, it's her deep blue, clever girl. Snap a picture of her quick. There it is. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Oh my god, there's so many ships around here. Alright, let's take a photo. Gargantuan shark spotted. Eyewitnesses. Now every damn poacher in existence is going to be after her. Eyewitnesses described the beast as larger than anything I've ever seen. A monster of a thing. Sources claim the creature appeared at the call of a horn. See part six for Jones's account of a mythical she leviathan. Possible connections to abyss-born forms of the So he's worried now that obviously it might get poached, and now that everyone knows about it, they're going to be able to hunt her. So we have to escort her to safety. I. It's not being drunk if you're part of the gentleman. And there we go. So we basically now will have to follow Deep Blue off to the edge of the map. The last of her kind. And this is so that we can now, uh, so that we can build Captain Tobias's type of ship, uh, which is a world-class reefer. And we'll have a look at that once we hopefully get it. So it's a bit of a distance to go. I actually don't know if we're going to get into combat or not, or what happens really if we don't, uh, if we didn't escort it. Because I don't know what you'd do then. Maybe call it again with another foghorn? I'm not sure. But uh, either way, it should be well protected with our two awesome ships. Our Perforian Battlecruiser and our Royal Ship of the Line. We'll see Deep Blue out to the coasts or out to the edge of the map and uh, to safety. Alright. I didn't expect that to happen in this episode. So it's it's taking us away from Mambessa just for a little while. That's not a big deal. And he's just out there now waiting, I guess, for it to come back. So this will be the ship that we'll be getting, and I'll describe it uh, when we once we get it, and we'll get to see what it's capable of. All right, so back to Mbessa. So over at this island here, we've got some construction Ashy. material, and we want to get set up so that we can get um, indigo, the fertility for in indigo here. I decided to use this island. We've only got two available to us that we could have done it on. This other one's a little bit small for it. Uh, this one just seems a little bit bigger. It's got three water deposits or river slots I guess that we can feed canals in that way so obviously the best way to do this is to link them together and then just use this one probably to irrigate the entire soil out here out here uh, so I think that's what I'll do first yeah so I guess the town if the town could s sit in here somewhere that would probably make the most sense so let's start with our marketplace not sure how many workers we actually need for indigo only 20 so it's not that much. Guess I should use blueprint mode just in case. All right, something like that. We'll just start off kind of basic. Uh, well, I guess we could build all the way up to it. Just trying to see. Something like that, maybe. Alright, that should be good enough. So let's just connect it out this way. Nice, and we've loads of room then just to put blocks of houses and other things, maybe um, even the fire station. Musician's Court, slam it down in here. Alright, something like that's probably good. Okay, cool, let's get building. Alright, nice. So that's our little starter workforce here. Um, 
Do we need anything else? I don't think so. Maybe maybe a fire station, but I think we're okay. So we'll just get, get to work on the river slots. So we'll just put in water pumps. Uh, we'll just start spending money to uh, connect these up real quick. Just trying to think. Uh, I guess connecting it out on this side would be the smartest thing to do. Because this is already completely fertilized already without having to extend anything. I feel it reflects the time. So it might look a bit odd doing this. I'll check it in a second. <laughs> Alright, just something like that. At least if we're connected, uh, that way we get access to 500 out this way. And if we connect this to here, again, bit of redundant space covering over the same thing, but ultimately it gives us much more flexibility. Rum shortage in Crown Falls. Oh yeah, we always have that. I don't send rum there. They don't need it. Alright, so with that, that means now we have 750 irrigation capacity to feed out of this one. So we can irrigate pretty much everything, I, I would imagine. Um, so let's see. So we're, we're going to have to start thinking about how we're going to get down, uh, lay out the indigo. So something like this, indigo farms. And then we want to kind of, so let's just check. So how many tiles is it? It's 144. We might want to put down a trade union or something to really maximize it in, in future. God, my, I, I know I'm <laughs> sounding a bit weird, maybe. My cat is just, like, blocking the entire screen here. If you move her, she's just going to get all annoyed. All right, she's finally, like, starting to lie down again. I can see what I'm doing. My girlfriend's not here, so I can't have her look after the cat. And otherwise, she'll just scratch the door and want to come in. All right, anyways. Uh, right, so, 144. See, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out what I want to start with. Um, let's just start with the canal to come out. So just feed it straight out this way. Man, look at that. Looks so nice. We're going to ruin your terrain, unfortunately, with farms. But this will irrigate all of the soil. And then I guess what I haven't really thought about or figured out just yet is how exactly should you do these kind of things? Because you could... The modules of a farm can't overlap the canal, right? So that's where the interesting kind of aspect of building comes in. But you also want to put the farms maybe up against the cliffs to make maximize space that way to a, to an extent to a degree so maybe having one like there uh, having one like here and having another here on a bit of the dry terrain here and then let's see the warehouse right next to it again on dry terrain could be a Should good have idea it from your cold dead hands so that would be two and then we'll just use all of that space as best as we can. Is that 144? Oh, wow. Oh, right. We can actually fit a lot in then. That's great. Let's start in from the inside first. Sweet. Nice. Yeah, that's kind of what I want. So there's two. So unfortunately, this doesn't actually have a, a route out. So we'd have to... Um, do that and this and just connect it. Actually, wait, wait, wait. I don't think it does need root out, right? No, it just needs to connect to these. Oh, this is actually working very well. <laughs> yeah, you actually don't need a root out. This is totally fine to do this. So we'll just stick a road here. Um, try not to make it look too ugly, I guess. Yeah, maybe we'll just keep it straight. And we can decide what to do after that. But there we go. That's our first little bit there. And then we'll have to decide, okay, well, how do we want to feed the canals up this way? And how big, how far is the town going to need to come out, you know? Oh, some of these didn't have roads, did they not? My bad. This story is about a city, like this one. Alright, fine. Not a big deal. Okay, cool, let's get building. All right, so there's our first indigo farms. We've got two. And just for now, I guess we'll just connect this road up any way we can. That looks awful, so we'll just <laughs> move around that, I guess. All right, cool. Alrighty, there we go. Took me longer than it should have, but there we go. <laughs> All right, so indigo, first indigo farm set up. We also have spice fertility here and bee abundance, so we can build apiaries and things like that. This is all lovely irrigated land as well. We might have to move around how the canals are done. 
Uh, depending, I like leaving these little patches here. You know, people were pointing out actually in previous episodes, like, oh, you missed a bit, you missed a module or whatever, there's an empty square. It's because, like, if, the, if it's a dry bit of terrain, let's have a look over where I did that. It was here. It was a dry bit of terrain. I just put a tree down on it instead. And same with here. There's no point extending a canal up one grid because it's going to, you know, 90% of where it's covering is already irrigated. For one tile, it doesn't really make any sense. You know, one of these basically covers... How much exactly is it? I guess it'd be good to have the exact number. Like, coming out here would kind of make sense, but not really, because it's still covering, like, so much that you don't need to. But yeah, so it's four out in all directions, right? So four to the left of it. So just put one down there. So it's like saying, like, all that, all this, you know, and all that is going to be covered. So is that worth extending one just to get this one tile here? It's, it's probably not when it's severely, like, limited in how many you have. Especially if I want to be using it to actually make nice thing, things to look nice. Like, I want to feed canals into my town, which is really, there's no need to do that. They don't need that at all. Which I always thought was really weird with this DLC. I think it would have been good, an interesting kind of thing if they God. did need it as a new happiness day. requirement. Or a new life. if more buildings needed it. But anyway, they don't. Um, so that just means, yeah, I, I kind of fill it in with trees just to make it look nice. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's actually more efficient. You use more tiles... Like, one-to-one, -one you get more fertility out of the canal space if you do it that way, I think, ultimately. Uh, at least that's what it seems to make sense in my head, my head that way. I don't know why I clicked that. Anyway. Uh, let's actually check on that deep blue quest. How's it going? See? <laughs> Turned out good for both of us. Sail back to the world-class reefer and collect your reward. Oh, Alright, let's do that. I've actually got a ship right here anyway. We can just sail to it. Oh, this is a busy, busy shipping lanes out here. That stuff will be the making of you. Oh, All right. She's a right side, ain't she? <laughs> Last real wonder of the world. Farewell, old girl. I think at last we understand each other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is some weird relationship with that um that shark. But anyway, so we'll come down here, we'll drop off this blueprint in our harbor, um, in our harbor master office in the Docklands, and that has coverage of this place, so we should get the blueprints and the option to now build a different type of ship, should we wish. Alright, back to Mbessa. So Indigo. So indigo is gonna combine with what? Uh clay. Now we could collect clay here, or we could just ship it in. It does seem a bit weird to ship it in. It seems like a waste, but we have free airships. Maybe I'll just do that for now. It, I guess like it does seem inefficient to produce clay here at the same time. We actually no wait, wait, we do you have clay here because we have it for the mud break. So I guess while we have this going, we don't need to ship it in. But I think eventually we'll turn off the clay collectors, turn them into um, canals instead. Uh, water pumps and that way we have even more canal space to use and we'll just deliver clay in Make mud bricks in the buildings themselves without needing to connect. So ceramics is just those two. It's yeah, Just a clay deposit and one of these and that's every 30 seconds. So that's 15 seconds 30 seconds So you need two of these or one of these and you need a, Well half of this for that. Yeah so you could have two of these for one of them, for them. So it's like four, two, and one, right? If you wanted to completely use it. But this has obviously been used slightly in, in that building as well. Oh, damn, man. Yeah, something's wrong with me. I, I could tell. I was just totally off. I was distracted by my cat. That's my excuse, okay? I was distracted by my cat. There we go. Alrighty. But it's, it, she's away now, so it's fine. A competitor's island is under sea. So, the next thing I think, now that I know that the modules are going to go to here, I could bring in the canal this way. Three, four. And you could actually feed it up if you wanted to, right? So I could do something like that. And that would go there. Oh, it couldn't go there. It'd have to go on the other side, actually, thinking about it. Or the road would just have to be further out, actually. Yeah, that would work. Well, ideally, you could actually have the road here. Sorry, I'm being very finicky with this. I guess if you want to maximize this little bit of space, you should just build it. I just don't like these um, 
staircase looking road sometimes. But it's all good, I guess. Because ultimately we can just put this like um, somewhere like there. And then we could have another one like here. And that'll be four. And this will make use of all that space in there. Oh yeah, so I could actually extend this now just... Just one more tile over. Right, so we don't have anything there. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it makes sense to do it the other way. Sorry. Just thinking on the fly. <laughs> so yeah, this, this does make sense this way. And then you can get rid of that. And then extend it out. There we go. Okay. And then this could do the same. And it could just make use of all of that. It doesn't seem right, though. We probably want the canal to come in again at some point, right? So maybe I'll just temporarily remove that. We'll just build this other one for now. Boom. I'm gonna, oops. I'm gonna just cut that tile here. And then we'll feed in another canal. So it's four slots away. But we need more than that, so... Here. Then we're gonna need another warehouse, of course. All right. Yeah, I think this is good. It'll take me a while to get to get it done, but I think it's I think it's still good though. Yeah, much better, much better. And I guess we could just keep doing that as we go further and further down every time. And I think it's relatively efficient. High pitched voice. We could just stick that there. But yeah, like obviously there's all this space as well, so. You could just redesign it and push this up further and let the let the fields go with it. Um, or just, just, you know, we'll see. I want to make use of this space kind of first, see how much canals we have left and then push further closer towards the town. So for now, though, I think it's actually that's actually like pretty efficient, right? I, I mean, I hope people agree. I think it is. No wasted space, not really. I think the roads maybe cover a little bit of irrigated soil, but not that much. And generally, the production buildings are all on dry land, so that's the way you want it. So yeah, I think, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and that's four of those indigo things. So we'll just get two more houses here. What else do these guys need? They need goat milk. I guess we could just get that for them now to grow the population. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I think I'll just... I guess if we just copy and paste the one that we have over here, these straight line goat farms, it's probably the best way to do it. Don't think we'll really need to, but you never know. Alright, cool. And then we'll just hook up a road here. So that's that's a temporary thing. It's just to keep our, you know, people fed. Um, Alright, so that should be goat milk. They don't have finery. We actually have way overproduced finery in the other place, so we could deliver it here if we wanted to. Don't know how much population we're actually ultimately going to need. I guess we'll find out. Uh, let's just check out the great, the world-class reefer again. So drop that in here. We'll access our docklands. Open this up. Select this. Deep blue... What's it called? Deep blue... Sh uh, deep blue ship blueprints. <laughs> uh, so tea-stained blueprints to build an heir to the old shark ship. Deep blue. Now, just before we check it, some people also asked me to move the piers forward and, like, link it up a bit better. So I've done that, and then I put down street lights and trees in between to make it look a little bit nicer. I've also changed some of these so they have corners uh, where I could. It's real finicky because, obviously, I've explained before, pressing Shift-V won't doesn't give you all the options. You can't rotate it. It kind of automatically slams in place. Um, but, yeah, super, super in, in love with my own dock lens. Can't deny it. Can't deny it. Can we change this one? Yeah, we can change that one there. There we go. Looks good. Looks good. 
So now our supreme... Some people actually said, like, uh, you should have left a gap in between for people to walk up and down with keys and stuff. I, don't, I didn't want to. I think it looks better that way. I like it being compressed and compact. It's a, it's a worker's area. It's supposed to feel real built up and industrial. Uh, so anyway, here's our world-class reefer. The swiftest ship ever to ply the international trade, fording great distances in record time. So, it costs um, 25 steel and 14 steam motors. Now, we are I think we have the costs reduced by Rohit Bhargava and our naval architect, so bear that in mind. It takes 14 minutes. Compare it to a regular cargo ship, they both have six slots. The, I reckon I could make you cry like a wee bear. The reefer only has one item slot, whereas this has two. The upkeep is 750 on this, whereas this is 500. Navigation is both 20. Influence is three for a cargo ship, but six for a world-class reefer. It's twice as expensive. Now, in my opinion, the ship is totally not worth having. We're going to build one anyway, just because I like having one of everything, really. But it is so not worth having the ship, in my opinion. Oh, we're out of um, workforce, actually. But that's okay. We can just um, make them work it. Uh, and the reason it's not worth having is because it's just not fast enough in between sessions. The idea of this ship, and it doesn't really say it, and what it does is it moves between regions faster than a normal cargo ship. When it's in the same region, it moves slower. So it's actually not as fast as a cargo ship moving around just like around here. But once we go out to this screen, it will move roughly twice as fast. Roughly. My tests in my video before was I moved one of the ships up here, or I raced them. I had a cargo ship and a world-class reefer both moving to the Arctic, and about on the halfway point you see that kind of separation of them, the other one pull ahead, and it gets there uh, about twice as fast or something. Now, it gets there nearly twice as fast, but it costs twice as much, so having two cargo ships does the same job, so I just feel like it's not worth it um, in that regard, and it doesn't have twice the capacity or anything, so... I just don't really see the need for it. If it only cost four influence, and it went a little bit faster, then I'd be like, oh yeah, definitely. And it only has one item slot, so you can't speed it up that much. Um, so that's my thinking on it. But you guys let me know what you think in, in the comments. I'm not really a stats guy. <laughs> I don't really break things down like that that much. It just seemed to me, when I played around with it, that I was like, oh, this doesn't really... I'm not really sure why I'd ever use it. But we'll set one up anyway, and maybe we'll deliver clay to Enbessa with it. How about that? Altitude, Seeing as it is, a, well, I don't think the heavier the material it matters, but it's a heavy material that's going to Enbessa, and it's going to be full up. So getting there faster, I guess, would be good. All right, cool. Either way, we are still progressing all the time. Goat's milk, they have their goat's milk. What do they need for finery? 150? You Boom. A new milestone. Awesome. I realized... Um, Captain Tobias speaks very s s quietly, so I had this way turned up, so I'll just turn that back down now. Uh, so, we can set up our first trade route here. My cat decided to stand up again. That's nice. Tabarim, Strath and Rancor, whatever. We're going to load up on consumer goods, uh, Enbessa, Finery. Load up on all that finery. We'll just load up with two for now, and then unload. Uh, and I'll assign a ship. Do we have a ship in this region? Ambassador ships, Katima's finger. <laughs> I don't know why I found that funny. Uh, this is going to be called. Um, I still, yeah, ENB. I know I don't need to do that anymore, but I still like doing that. And I'll just call it supply for now. So Katima's finger is going to take finery, drop it down here, and then take back indigo, right? We'll just keep them separated like that for now, so we don't have to do any discard discarding of cargo or anything like that. Uh, I'll hit accept. We'll put that on a new group called Embessa. I thought it was with two S's, but just earlier in this episode, it came up and it said one S. Let me see. Oh yeah, it is one S. I always thought it was two. Alright, cool. So, is that ship now doing its thing? Yes, it is. So, it's going to bring over the extra finery. Now, before we pick it up, of course, we got to make sure we set a limit. Otherwise, we'll take take stuff away that we shouldn't. So, set the minimum stock to be 100. Did I do it? It didn't look like it worked. I pressed enter. Enter? No? Click. Click works. Alright, there we go. Just set a minimum stock of all these things. It would be really nice if you could do a quality of life where you just set minimum for everything 100, but alas. You cannot. 
Alright, nice. So, that is Strath Rancor set up. The tier 1 population pretty much have everything they need. Uh, until I build even more, and then we could deliver some extra dried meat if we wanted. They have their own goat's milk, they have the indigo. So, now that indigo's set up, we can now deliver or set up a ceramics workshop and make our own ceramics. Tapestries are going to require lin more linseed farms, which is what we have here. Indigo, missing fertility, and tapestry. So let's get to work. So, a hundred elders for a ceramics workshop. Are you mad? Let's um, get a few more. That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. We only need five if we want to control this. Because they can grow to be double. Now, I'm not going to grow them to be double immediately, but that should be enough. Ceramics Workshop. I think as well with my design on the city in the end, I'd really like to try and emphasize putting production buildings in the town. I think that's what I'm going to try to do to make this place look really good. Where possible. Because some of them look awesome, like, especially these little things. I just think that would look good in a town. I don't know why. Or like, in this town. We have some production buildings here, like the dried meat and stuff. I think that just, where there's like campfires and people are drying meat, I don't know, it just gives that markety kind of feel to it, in my opinion. Um, so I, th I kind of feel the same with that. Something like this is not really a markety looking type building, right? So that maybe would never need to do it. If they've got like little walls around them, it's like, oh no, that's kind of its own enclosed production. But the ones that are more open, like this, I feel like is more like, hey, come by and try stuff. Anyways, so the first indigo delivery should be on the way. So we're dropping finery off first. And we have four indigo farms. Alright, well let's start planning ahead now for the next thing that we're going to need. So we need indigo for tapestries. And we'll need more linen. So let me look at the production rates that we've got for linen right now. It's an intermediate, I think. It's four to four, so that's maxed out. So I'm going to get another couple of linseed farms, even though we are over overproducing. I'm going to get two more. And that's because we're overproducing for the finery, right? Let's check finery. Production is twice as much as we need. But we... Yeah, okay, that's fine then. No pun intended. So another linseed farm. Hmm... What is this? Trade union building. Oh, because there's one there. Just trying to think where it would be nice to use it. Could just pop it somewhere like here. Make use of the uh, river that way. And maybe put another one on the inside somewhere. It is sitting on top of... Irrigated soil, I guess. Which wouldn't be good. So maybe not, actually. We'll just put them together like that. This is, this is like perfect for the goat farms. Like it's in between a road. So what I'll do here is do something like this. This could be a little bit intensive. And then this is a water pump ready to ready to bring its canal out. Hmm. Could just do that, see what it looks like. This canal isn't connected. I'm just thinking, do I want to connect it to join the, uh... Yeah, maybe, actually. An explosion in one of your factories. Mm. If I do it from this tile, this will make sense in a second. This should leave room for a road on dry soil as well. Let's try that. There's something in the back of my head today where I'm just like, this. you're not doing this right. <laughs> Don't know what it is. But, um... Can't immediately identify why I'm thinking that. Wait, I don't need to do that either, actually, because we can just feed in this canal now. So, I'll leave a bit of dry grass around there. This is where we can start joining it up, though. Yeah, actually, I need to do it out from the other thing. Sorry, my bad. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. There we go. So that will cover that area nicely. Two, three, four. 
and then just a little bit extra. So this is getting a bit more, more and more redundant the further up we go. And yeah, I could probably cut this back a bit if we want more production, even more production buildings there. Because this is now all covered, but I think we could probably deal with having more farms if we wanted to. Definitely more than two can fit in here, yeah, so let's cut this back a bit. And then there's room for um, maybe warehouses and things as well. Yeah, so we've got all this dry grass right here and here. So yeah, I think I'll maybe put it there and then we can fit another one of these in here. So this might get a bit, a bit weird, <laughs> but I think this will be good. This should be able to have one, two, three, four, four tiles out. So that's four more linseed farms here. Hopefully the most we'll ever need. And this is the canal that can kind of come up, actually. So something like that. Sorry I'm taking so long. Um, I'm just thinking it out. But yeah, that gives us really good coverage, leaves enough dry grass for just like the production buildings themselves, and we can cut that now. So yeah, so if I can make these farms fit into this area, that'd be nice. I don't know if it's mapped out that way, but we'll find I guess we'll find out. Right, something like that. And then this just needs to follow that kind of border around. Slightly tedious work. But then let's see, can we make use of all this space? Yep. So this one has a route out as well. Now that's dry grass, but that's okay. We can just build over it to at least connect the module. Good. Yeah, there's actually room for another one, it seems. More, or another type of farm if we wanted to. Cool. Alright, so. Basically, what we end up here with is all this empty space here. So we could change where this canal comes in, if we wanted to. Uh, yeah, we could change where it comes in, but it is connected now, so we do get a lot of extra canal space. Anyway, huge amount of linseed. And that linseed now lets us, will contribute to the extra linen mills that we're going to have. So how many is that? 30, so two of these, yeah, yeah. So we could just dump them over here. Seeing as we have a town hall, uh, town hall that's going to go there. Or whatever it's called. Was it? Trade union. Sorry, my bad. Let's get those. And we'll cut a road right between them. Perfect. Road between that. Why not? So there we go. No route to a warehouse. Yeah, you do. And maybe we can just drop some trees and grass and ornaments and things. Uh, in these little patches. Maybe bushes or whatever. Good. All right, so we should have our ceramics coming in now for the first time, right? That's started producing. Yeah, cool. Clay is fine. Indigo is good. They have their ceramics growing two more elders in each household. So to get to seafood stew, we'd need three hundo. And to get the three hundred, that's not that bad, actually. We could do that relatively easy. We want to do some of the quests as well. And let's go back to the old world to see, is our ship done? It'll be done in one minute. One minute. I get to have a look at that. Alrighty, I was also thinking something kind of interesting with these trees, the way they've grown around the um, uh, wands of woodcutters. I might put these around the town uh, when I'm building this area out, and then have the monastery like inside of these kind of trees and stuff, as well as have the canals go around them. I just think I don't have an ornament for those trees, and I think they look really lush and dense. So I might try that, but that's a that is a weird one. You'd have to really wait for them to kind of spruce up and everything. Uh, what are you? You're lacking linseed. So yeah, our warehouses here are going to be working overtime. We have two. This one and this one. Both medium. Can't go any higher than that until we get to 600. We've got room for more down here, though. Yeah, actually, let's just... um. 
Yeah, it looks more uniform that way. They're industrializing. And we get trade union and try to maximize or reduce the what workers and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, cool. A little bit of extra space that we need to fill. This this area here is what I'm worried about as well. It's like, well, what can you fit in there? Maybe a goat farm? If we pull that canal out to the side or something, just to make sure we can actually fit it. Let's have a look really quickly. I'm just curious. What can actually fit in there? Oh, so close. Yeah, actually. Just two tiles out that canal, and then we'd be able to fit that in. And that would really, really use that space well, I think. Let's Might as well just try to do that now. Oops. You could actually feed another canal down that way if you wanted to. Yeah, about there. Uh, so let's see. Because they're obviously going to need more than two eventually. Oh, I didn't even need to go as far as I did. And we're right in line for the warehouse. That warehouse is going to be working overtime. There we go. Oops, cut the road. I think I'm actually being re pretty efficient with it, and I think it also looks good. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, so that ship should be done now. Let's go check it out. Boom! Our world-class reefer. Well... Hi. Am I right? <laughs> or we could just call it the 420. <laughs> world-class reefer? Anybody? No? Okay. So, its speed is 11 knots, and the speed of a regular cargo ship is 12. Forget the items, they're not speeding us up anyway. Uh, so I think what I'll do is go somewhere like Swords, where we're picking up clay all the time. Actually, no. I know where we've got a lot of clay. Crown Falls. So if we're at Crown Falls and we get our world-class reefer to pick up clay and bring it to Ambessa, that'd be pretty nice. Create the route, trade route, Crown Falls, deliver to and Bessa, drop it at Tabarine, load me up with the old world clay. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Got them. Not sure if we want to take anything back yet, but at least we've got that. Um, so, idle ships, the 420, there it is. And we'll call this, I guess it's Crown Falls, or we'll, what's this? Oh, Cape Trelawney. Cape Trelawney to Mbessa Clay. Except. And yeah, I don't, that's a new group in itself. I don't think we have anything that goes in that route. Cape to Mbessa. Yeah, so Cape 2 and Bessa, we have our one ship. It's just delivering clay, and it's on the move right now. So we'll just click it. So there you go. That is the world-class reefer, and that's how you get it. Um, by getting any one of your goods to the specialty slot number one. So we've gotten soap to that, that tier now. Let's have a look. Yeah, so soap is at tier one. And in swords specifically, we have a lot of it. Oh, actually, we don't. That's weird. Oh, maybe because we just sold it. John Lafortune and Benty Jorgensen have agreed in alliance. Oh, nice. Oh, Benty made friends with the pirates? That's cool. Uh, so let's have a look. Gold is at 250. So, yeah, in six minutes he's going to be coming by. Why are we so short on soap? I don't know. I feel like we should have more than that. Maybe it's like on a ship right now about to be delivered, actually. That would kind of make sense. There's a hundred about to be dropped off, I guess. Hmm. I just, I don't know. I, normally it's like uh, at nearly a thousand. So, just a bit, I'm a bit worried I didn't calculate something correctly there. But anyway, we get a better deal for it now. We should have 44 for jewelry. That's what we want. And same for this. That might be why. Maybe we're giving too much away. Yeah. And... 
yeah, everything else seems okay. Gold should be coming in soon, <laughs> hopefully. It's all good. I'll look at that kind of stuff in between episodes to make sure it's right. All right, back to Mbessa. So let's have a look at some of the quests we can do. So we've got two, Binium's Vision and Three Hearts is One. So now that our uh, elder population is just coming up that little bit, and we can build it up to get to Seafood Stew, that's going to require lobster. So we'll have to go to a different island for that, I think. Oh, no, we can actually do it on... No, we can't. Lobster. Do we not have lobster? We do. Todd Murden has lobster. Okay, so it'll be this island that we'll be building up next. Uh, so while we're going to read some of our stuff, we should pick up some construction material. Come into the any any the things we could buy here? We could buy a treasure map, actually, and bring down our diving bell. He's only got five goods available. I wonder, is it going to expand later on? A spitting cobra. Not part of any set, so I'm just going to leave it. It's kind of cool, though. Uh, affects dry houses 35%. I'm just going to buy these items. You know, our money is just so not an issue anymore. We might as well just buy these things and see what we can... Um, where we can use them. If we can use them at all. Not part of any set. Of course, we can just activate these two. Hibiscus farm, indigo farm, and linseed farm. Negative 50% workforce. A flower girl. So let's get our flower girl and pop, pop her in to our new trade union. All in best in residences. Bonus happiness 8. Residences gain bonus happiness from hibiscus tea. Reduced needs by 30%. They consume less goat milk. Shia Shah. Tea house empress. And consume less tapestries with the industrious embroidery dress. Yeah, sure. Let's get both of them. They're beautiful. All right. Let's go click that. No, that doesn't work. Pop that back. Activate. Activate. All right, let's get our diving bell. I don't even know where it is. I'm assuming it's in Cape Trelawney. Yes. And it has its escort as well. My god, I love this game. I'm so much I'm just having so much fun. I might sound kind of quiet or something, I don't know. I don't know why I'm so self-conscious all the time. I just am a little bit. Um but I'm just having an absolute blast working all this stuff out. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. All right, so while that's all cooking now, uh, we can maybe have a look at Binyam. So Binyam's quest is to do with the Research Institute, and Emperor Katima is just like the story here. I can't really remember what it would, what it necessarily does for you. Oh, I guess you, yeah, I think you get some items and things at the end of it, uh, but I can't recall what, so it'll be a bit of a surprise what we get. Um, but yeah, we can start working on Binyam's vision, maybe first. Let's have a look at this. Binyam wants your help examining various architectural proposals for a monumental building he's calling the Research Institute. It's Binyam's belief that he has the expertise of scholars from all around the world... Uh, sorry, that the expertise of scholars from all around the world might be brought together under one roof, a truly international campus university housed in the cultural nexus that is the old world. Let me actually hear what he had to say about it. I have need of your advice to select an architect for a project I have been mulling over. All right, cool. So let's uh, check it out. Shop around. So there's some people here who have proposals. You can see they're wearing little, um, I guess, college graduate things. Mm. A dear and amiable bunch, but their work is small fry. Looks pretty nice to me. Uh, let's just turn him up, actually. Next one. Talented, no doubt, but their experience too specific. Wow, their he's, projects lacking scope. He was way louder. <laughs> only, wow, I only brought it up by like 30 or something, didn't I? But anyway, good. That actually looks really cool as well. There we go. Extensive knowledge. Demonstrable skills. Yes, this consortium have concepted the perfect prototype to become the Research Institute. Nice. Many breeds of cattle roam in Beza, but the Sangha is best known and beloved by all. So sustain across the region dried meat supply. Not so long ago were the salt mines worked by thralls of the warring princes. I hope now they will stand for something better. Those are our Sangha farms. Pleasingly chewy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It may take a little getting used to for foreigners, as with many of our dishes. 
The last tiles are inlaid, the drapes hung fantastical. Throw open the palace doors. All right, we get to go visit him now. Let's just wait for this it to finish. It's in vain the Almighty sends us dreams, but one mustn't forget the needs of those who live. So we've just four seconds to go to finish something to My chew over. My people will travel far to tend to their duties. Thus, our food is often whey food, salt cured. Well, we've just done it. Is he going to pop up again? Or no? Is that it? I guess that was it. All right, so uh, the next one, Taming the Towers. Select so Kutima to talk to him. Oh, he's here, is he? First by the river was the zebra, who startled when the hyena giggled. Who in turn helped the hippo erupt from the mud. Then the cheetah slunk through the tall grass and made them all tremble, except the lion, who slept. This was no matter for a king. I need to write this down. So it's uh, zebra, hyena, hippo, cheetah, and lion. Is that it? Yeah. All right, zebra, hyena, hippo, cheetah, lion. And then solve the riddle by clicking the different towers. So we're starting with zebra. So zebra tower. The zebra tower representing the Enbesan community. Hyena tower next. Representing the Enbesan will to survive. The hippo tower. Representing the Enbesan love of nature. The Cheetah Tower, representing the speed of Mbessin progress. And then the Lion Tower, representing royal lit. power. Let Leonine Flame herald a new age for Mbessa. Should uh, darken the darken the day, maybe. The oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> maybe we can play what he's about to say again. There we go, looks a bit better now at night, doesn't it? Just that little... As the sun sets. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. That looks really good. Let's see if we can get him to talk again. The ancient baths are sadly rather overgrown. Mm. My wife especially is rather keen to see them restored. Mm -hmm. His wife <laughs> wants him to ba bathe, I guess. All right. The Empress's baths. So let's just uh, brighten the day up again. Remove the objects blocking the bathing area. So the bathing area is out here. Get rid of that stone rubble. Let's get rid of some of the felled branches. Ah, what can bring a people together better than bathing blissfully together? Yanehoi! Yanehoi! The gods, they are singing. It is a miracle. <laughs> a blessing. All right. Singing goats. Did you drink too much tej? <laughs> Very well. I shall give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh, yeah. Look at it. Oh, that's a dog. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, cool. I didn't know you could actually walk around the palace. I thought it was kind of like off limits. Ugh. Excuse me. How's it going? Wow, they're very tall compared to me. Big men. All right, let's do the singing goats. The Goatberg Variations. Emperor Katima asks you to investigate a behooven miracle, a barbershop quintet, quintet of pitch-perfect goatlets. All right, so we have Lati, So... Let's select him. Domi Soti La. I know, I know. I need to write it down, because otherwise I will make a mistake, and I'll forget. Domi So... T La. Do me so tea something like I don't know. So do let's start with do. Where are you? See if I can actually cue it up a bit better. So do me so tea la. Okay. Do. Me. Tell no one I said so, but I've heard court musicians less talented than these <laughs> wonderful creatures. <laughs> Oh, Katiba. <laughs> hey! What's this? So he is finally come. All been sent. It was but a matter of time. 
Maintain the position Her Majesty set out in her letter. Use any means at hand to achieve the necessary result. A personal failure would be unacceptable. I swore to myself I'd never return. Swore it! But how... you? And wh why are you here? Ah, yes, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, Her Majesty has no qualms with free traders. But please, no politicking here, for the Crown has a vested interest in Inbeza. Let it not be said a guest was made to feel unwelcome in Inbeza, regardless of his bearing. Let him settle, so long as it is not on our land. We shall refrain for the time being. And observe. Oh, he built so quick. <laughs> it's like watching a time lapse. I'm always really and interested to see how they built. Perfect bleat. <laughs> but I'm afraid now we really must get back to work. Indeed. The elders have been clamoring for a place to partake in the holy endeavor. A testament to your stewardship. All right. So a man out of sorts. The elders constitute a devout, opinionated group. Do not underestimate the reach of the moon their council. It was only a matter of time before Enbesa attracted such attention. Now will its true test begin. I am told you know each other. Pray welcome him in my name, and see what wind bears him ashore. All right. Man, there's a load of dialogue in this. That's the way it's going to be for the next couple of episodes, I think. Um, so Emperor Katima does not wish to give Sir Archibald opportunity to settle unchecked at his borders and asks if you would reach out to see what exactly is it that he's after. So it's actually kind of an interesting story. You know, Archibald represents the crown, really. He represents the queen's interest and he's kind of arrived here. And Emperor Katima is a bit worried about it. And Archibald says he's been here before. He swore he'd never return. But the queen says... um. You know, if things don't go to plan, it would be treated as a personal failure, it would be unacceptable. And we have Archibald's little estate has been set up on the cliffs here. Looks awesome. Almost like a royal retreat, in a way. I'm surprised they don't have a path that leads up to it. Uh, but I'm always really interested to see how the AI builds. I mean, this is... or not the AI, the... Um, I guess the pre-scripted kind of design that the Anno designers put down. This actually isn't done yet, I guess. Normally, um... It should, I think it'll fill out later, once we get there, maybe, it will become more permanent. But yeah, it's just kind of cool. Uh, you know, I, I immediately think like, well, it's a bit weird to have your police station kind of far out on the edge, but still looks nice, looks nice. They leave gaps as well. They have an organic kind of build to them. They ain't building in grids, you know what I'm saying? They know what to do. <laughs> they know what's up. All right, let's just drop our items off. Uh, maybe I'll build that trade union, and we might build a town hall if we can. I don't know if we have the Town Hall ability yet. No, Town Hall is at 300. Let's get to 300 and then we'll wrap it up after we build a Town Hall. That'd be nice. What are we at now? 254. There we go. Lovely. I love the Elder Houses. I think they look really cool. With the, like, dark, blackish, thatched roof on top. So drop all these items off. We'll send our ship to Archibald. And we'll activate the ship piston engine to get moving. Let's go. And what are we at now? 303, which means we have our town hall. So maybe, instead of the monastery, we'll clear this area for a town hall for the time being. Monastery's not going to kick in till what? I don't even know. A thousand, is it, or something? It's one thousand, yeah. So it's a, we're a while a while off that yet. But this will make good use of um, space, actually, having it here. Obviously, that is 20 influence. We've only got 20 left. So we just got the bonus happiness 8, reduced needs for goat milk. And then we got uh, industrious embroidess... Reduced needs for tapestries, 20% less. Who else do we have available? Happiness reduced needs for dried meat. Ex excellent. There we go. Industrious Embroidess, Shaya Shah. 
and then we have Elder Selassie. Outspoken, charitable, and too often right, he is an easy target for his colleagues in the Keftan Moot. People call her Shereretti Spider <laughs> because of her great weaving skill and zeal. And then Shia Shah. <laughs> there were so many great coffee houses in the Upper Tabarim, I just had to try something different. And she likes the goat milk, I guess. All right, cool. A little bit more efficient. Always feels good. Let's um, activate the trade union here. See what we can do for reducing the workforce. So we have apiary, dry houses, productivity for Sanga farms. Affects goat farm and Sanga farm. Affects hibiscus farm, indigo farm, and linseed. Now we do have some linseed farms here. It's going to reduce workforce. We're on 64. It saved us about 12 people. <laughs> not the, maybe not the best. Goat farm and Sanga farm. Unfortunately, yeah, because of the way I've built some of these things, I try not to stack them all into a big grid. Maybe it's not the best use of the trade union, but there's other things here definitely I'd like to reduce. Like, if we could reduce linen mills, or if we could reduce uh, tea spicers, the amount of workforce that goes into these, that'd be awesome. So we'll, I'm sure we'll find items to do it eventually. Uh, we could do something like this, though. Chance of fire reduced in all production buildings. I don't know if we even need it, but might as well use these things that we have. And... Chance of fire is increased, maintenance costs reduced. Not that we need it again, but let's activate that while we have that in here. How about that? Wow, it all just went really quiet when I put that book in there. <laughs> all right. Full output storage as well. We have too much linseed. Our ship is just arriving now, or about to. Should we leave it there though? I think we should. And we'll pick up the story in the next episode. So, in this one, we've got our world-class reefer. We built and set up our production chains for indigo. We haven't set up chilies yet, though. That's going to be next, or spices, I should say. Uh, as we've now unlocked the ability to consume seafood stew. So, seafood stew is going to combine lobster, teff... Or, well, lobster, uh, spices, teff grass, teff mill, and then a wat kitchen. So, these two, into that, then into that, mixed with this. So, pretty complicated. Well, in terms of, like a non-old world production chain, especially considering the fertilities, right? We need a fertility for teff, a fertility for spice, a fertility for lobster, then we need elders in a teff mill, and then elders in the watt kitchen, so it gets a bit more demanding, certainly. And then clay pipes, we have all that clay coming in, we'll mix it with tobacco, and uh, actually maybe we get our world-class reefer to go to the new world, pick up that tobacco as well, and load the ship with both, that would actually make a lot of sense, uh, seeing it'll be heavily inter- Interregional and not just interregional, but on the farthest possible regions, really. Uh, well, actually, I guess the Arctic to Embess is the farthest possible, but between here and here and here and here, pretty good. All right, so that's going to be it for today. We'll pursue the quest with um, Binyam a little bit further for the Research Institute uh, in the next episode, as well as Katima, and uh, just continue building up our population here in Embesa. <laughs> All right, thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.